you didn't need that skill or training. And then the South had a, uh, a system that when they take the Africans from Africa and they stop on the island, what is the little island? Right over there, it is in Florida. And they would learn the black slaves a few few words, a few English words. But the teachers that people that were teaching this English were, were Dutch English. So that's where Ed, this, Dutch, all that came from. That's uh, Dutch, local English. Okay. So, but it was enough to run a farm. After growing up north, you had to learn the English version of English. Okay. Now, uh, the South was getting richer than the North because they was getting free labor. So when the interaction started, in 1862, they had kind of a, uh, started an uprise, and most of the uh, white men in the South uh, uh, they didn't want to do and didn't do the labor and the hard work. So they, uh, a lot of them went in the military and stuff like that. This is why the military was uh, majority uh, white. I mean, heavily southern white. But now, when the interaction comes, all the officers from that were born in the South, they left the military and went in, and, and created the Southern Army. And the, the remaining were left with the Northern people of their army. So now we got an interaction, an interruption, uprising that would be better. And so. Uh, that, from that fight, uh, the slaves that were in the South, okay, they were listening in on the politics. They didn't have no say in it, but, you know, they were working around the white folks' house, and they was keeping up with what was happening amongst themselves. So they found out that the North wanted to hurt the South, so uh, if they could run away from the South, steal away from the South, and go North, okay, they would give them, uh, they even got paid money, and uh, a little bit of the jobs were nice and clean and stuff like that. And then also at that time, they needed a lot of heavy work uh, in the military that they didn't normally have. Uh, uh, so uh, part of the slaves were used in the industry because that's a wartime situation. And the rest of the slaves was encouraged to be handy people around the army. But now the Northern Army and the Southern Army didn't want any black soldiers at first. Okay. So uh, what happened was uh, the pressure came to Lincoln. Okay. What you going to do with these slaves and how are you going to run the country? Well, Lincoln wanted to free the slaves. Lincoln did. Okay. But he couldn't get Congress to vote that way. So a, one of the top generals in the Northern Army issued a, a, a document called the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, it was only set up at that time for the conveniency of the military. So it was a very weak document, but it served the purpose for the blacks that were working around the military. They got paid, and they set established rates for paying uh, the black people that were working for the uh, army and the navy, uh, they wasn't paid the same price that the whites were paid. The white soldiers got a little bit more. That's the beginning of the Emancipation Proclamation. So it, as it developed and the feelings began to uh, get real strong against the north, the two sections of the country began to uh, bad feeling began to increase. So the activity began to increase. So the North began to increase the size of their army, and then the South began to increase the size of their army. And still at that time, uh, some of them said that uh, we've got these black boys just being uh, running away from the South and coming North, so why don't we put, uh, get them, put them in uniform? Now, the problem came that the white soldiers didn't want to be in 
in the same unit with the blacks. So what they did, they uh, found a very intelligent black man, a leader, that was Frederick Douglass. Okay, they used him to do to be in charge of the recruiting and into getting blacks to join the Northern Army. And so they, uh, that's how the black troops got their set up. And now uh, let me get it now straight again. So uh, Douglas Army, uh, uh, he became Douglas. Frederick Douglas. Douglas became a good friend and advisor to President Abraham Lincoln because if they had major problems with the blacks or didn't understand the, uh, their uh, attitudes and problems, they would call in Frederick Douglass. So uh, he was Lincoln's right-hand man in handling slavery. Now, as the war go along, and uh, you, there, there was always a few blacks in the North that had some education, even before the Civil War, and they uh, lived uh, starting in Maryland, where Maryland and Pennsylvania are state lines or, or territory lines to land. They called that the Mason Dixon line. That was the end of a, uh, where the slave or black people could socialize and set on the transportation, like the trains and stuff like that. If you're riding the train, he was going from North Carolina to New York. Uh, uh, when you get on the train to North Carolina, they had a special car for you, okay? And you couldn't go in the dining car, and he, uh, no service like that. So the blacks went every day had to travel north for transportation. They had to sell their sandwiches, uh, uh, <laughs> tea gears and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they they said it there. <laughs> in the black coach, and to put that coach up pretty close to the train because the smoke from the train would, would first hit the black coaches, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the front coaches, uh -huh. so that's where all the black coaches and white coaches sit in the black coaches, mm -hmm. I mean, the black coaches, uh -huh. and had uh, uh, places to sleep, mm -hmm. ride in the train where the blacks had to sit in the coach, mm -hmm. and they couldn't go in the dining room. Okay. And then when they get as far on the train as to uh, going in from Maryland into the state of Pennsylvania, they, uh, the blacks could move up and go into the, was allowed to, the only train going to New York, then you could go into the next coach and you could get your food or service. When they got into New York? Yeah, when they got into Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, the borderline between pure, uh, of Surrogation or Slavery Act was that was considered the borderline. Okay, the Mason Dixon line is what it called. I, I think, and the reason it was called Mason Dixon was they were two outstanding surveyors back in that time, okay. and they did the surveying to satisfy the lawmaking body, and they named it that Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon line. Okay. Now, as the war got to be going, getting real strong, and uh, Frederick Douglass uh, got together, and he had some problems getting some of the blacks to uh, join uh, the army, okay, because so, uh, some of them didn't like uh, what's going to happen when, when the war is over, and what kind of benefits should I get for fighting, and uh, we are not treated fairly. So. Some of the educated blacks had some problems. And then it was up to Douglas, he was the mediator. So he finally got enough, I think, to make two divisions and stuff like that. Quite a few blacks were in the Civil War, before in the Civil War, but before in the Civil War. Now, as, as all this is going on, the Army is the one that, uh, uh, that had because Congress would not pass any anti-slavery law. So the army, the army did that because the, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation uh, gave the blacks a little more freedom, the ones that worked for the army. So then what they did was Congress finally adopted that form, that, that piece of uh, 
document or literature and begin to modify it a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to give the uh, English Emancipation Foundation, since we're now are using it as a guideline, we will extend the privileges. So they increase it a little bit more. Okay, and uh, so in the north, they decided to build some schools for the black uh, college and university. And during that time, up until for the next 10 or 15 years, they said they had about six black universities that liberal white people donated money to set them up, like Hampton Institute, which is considered one, uh, Howard University, uh, what is it, Morgan in Maryland, uh, what is the one in Pennsylvania? They had one in Pennsylvania, and they had one in Missouri, so, and then they had, now Virginia had three universities, but they were more liberal because most of their slaves were under the English. And uh, the English treated their slaves a little bit better. They made better cabinets. And uh, uh, even some of them, the house boys, learned, they learned them how to read, write. And in, in some of the southern states, a slave wasn't even allowed to look at a newspaper uh, or anything like that, educational. Where in Virginia, uh, some of the uh, English people taught some of the slaves to read, write, and uh, some of them even was, uh, some of the uh, black fathers was having problems with the white man or uh, uh, having social contact with the black women. That's why you got uh, all kinds of different colors of black, and that was predominantly in Virginia. And New Orleans. New Orleans. I just don't agree about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they have right. white women. Yeah. But they look black. Yeah. And a lot of the white, a lot of the white men used to come and want to pay to be with them. Well, that that happened in Virginia. Too. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh -huh. They were so bad in some of the places in Virginia that the, uh, uh, even though the black man, that was his wife and his kids, and he's sleeping in the bed with his wife and the white man that was loving that black woman, uh, if he could slip away from his wife at night, he'd make the black boy get out of the bed, and he'd get the boy to bed with that same woman. That's how they and Okay. And I, I am almost a witness to that. Dad, have you got to uh, uh, Wait, go into that. Wait, no. Wait, you guys should have Yeah, I'm going to get there. Uh, I was trying wait, to no. deal Okay, wait a minute. I want to hear the witness. Wait. Okay, wait. Shut up. 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 Shut I want to hear it. Well, this is some of the things that don't nobody want to talk. I want to hear it. Go ahead. I want to hear this myself. Okay. Even in my family right now, I'm telling you some dirt in my family. Okay. My grandmother, my grandmother on my mother's side is a half white. Your grandma, hold on. Your grandmother on your mother's side, side is, is half, half white. white. So her dad was white? Oh. 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 She raised the white man that she worked with. Oh, and let me do it right. Her mother worked. Your grandmother's mother. Yeah, cooked okay. for the white. Uh huh. Okay, in some of the southern states, white women didn't like to feed babies from their breast. Okay. It made them bag and look bad. Okay. So that if, if the slave woman had a baby, a lot of about the uh -huh. same age, uh -huh. or born at the same uh -huh. time that the right. black. They would let that woman, she would not have to work in the field. Right. They'd right. find something for her to do at the house. Okay. Okay. And the okay. two kids, the black baby had one kitty, and then and the, and the white boy had one kitty. And they raised them like Okay? And, uh, well, Daddy, let's, let's get back to your, 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 get to your, 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 we know the history of the, we know the history of the, the black woman yeah, nursing uh, white kids, okay? Yeah, be quiet. <laughs> no, keep going. Then the black boy that worked around, he did all the housework, and the white man uh, was out running with the black woman, and the black boy was messing with the white woman. So that's what happened to your, your, your grandmother's mom. 
No, my grandmother's mother was, uh, yeah, that's where it happened. Okay. Okay. But then my grandmother was half white. Okay. 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 And then. So she was like the offspring of the master and the and Right. Okay. right. Okay. And down that same line, my mother, uh, on, on my, on my mother's side, be my grandmother, then uh, my mother on, on that side, uh -huh. and then come me. Right. You know, I lost out in the color. Really, but <laughs> so, so, you, so you, you profited. Cut that you part. This is black. Okay. This is a cut that you part. Cut that part today. today. And all right. Cut right. 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 You'd be right. wrinkled up and, and look like a prude. Right. James Brown would not have liked that statement. Then. No. All right. No, it's Go grandma. back to you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because Lover can tell you about the blue, the blue blood. Yeah, that's how they have it. Y'all really want to. What's the blue blood? Well, always got to ask the question about how. No, let him finish the question. Let him keep going, Grandpa. Yes. Now, well, what I'm saying is that the blue blood was killed in 1865. So it so happened during the Civil War, and there was killing up so many white people. Uh-huh. And killing up a few blacks. Ten percent of the of the candidacy in the World War, in Civil War was black. Mm -hmm. Only 2% of the population uh, of, of, of the support was, was black. So they was killing more black people than there were white people. That is in print. Mm -hmm. okay. during, during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. But you were fighting in separate units. And you didn't have any uh, black officers. Mm -hmm. You had sergeants mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And as a uh, uh, the war uh, uh, began uh, to control the South. Uh, the North and the South agreed to come together because oh, everybody was going to get broke. Uh, we were wasting all our resources, and England was moving in uh, from the East Coast, and, and the French was moving in from the South, you know, around New Orleans and up, up in the Mississippi River, the French controlled all of that right. at that time. Uh -huh. But then, the, the, after the war was over, the white got themselves back together. Now, during the time of the war, there was a lot of slaves in Virginia and in North Carolina uh, owners, okay? And uh, so whenever the Union Army uh, come across the mason Dixon line and need to get down in Virginia, if they captured one of them little towns, they'd free the slaves. So what the slave owners oh. did was to, to get out from under that situation. They moved, took up all their, all their slaves and all their possessions, yeah. the hogs and yeah. the wagons, yeah. and, stuff, and moved to Texas. At that time, the French was controlling Texas. If you think oh, about it, okay. Napoleon's army was down and all that. But now okay. so many landowners from Virginia, okay. all English, okay. moved down, in, down into Texas. Texas. They okay. set up their situation down there. Okay, brought their so slaves. They out. Yeah. So they brought their slaves and okay. stuff down there and set up their plantation. Oh, okay. And then okay. they brought their room with them. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's how the they, blacks they, got, got into Texas. Texas. Okay, I never knew that. Now, the, the other thing about it, it always have been some white person. Uh -huh. It didn't believe in slavery. Right. And we're trying to help right. to get some yeah. other yeah. slaves. Yeah. So if slaves was smart enough and had nerve enough uh -huh. at night, if he could break, slip away from the uh, the camp or the location that that the blacks had, they always make the blacks live in little shanty shacks, uh -huh. pretty close where the white man could keep up with. Uh -huh. But at night, some of them was a uh, uh -huh. man would get so disgusted, uh -huh. the white man take them, took my wife and sleeping uh -huh. with them, and this uh -huh. took me so bad, uh -huh. I'm going to leave. But now, where are you going when you leave? Right. You, right. you ever thought of that? Uh -huh. Okay, this is where the white friends came. Okay. There were some white people didn't believe in that, mm -hmm. even in the South. Mm -hmm. So when a slave would slip away, mm -hmm. the word had gotten amongst the slaves uh -huh. that Mr. William Henry over here, uh -huh. if you can slip away, he'll let you sleep in his basement tonight and uh -huh. feed you. Uh -huh. Then he, Mr. William Henry, knows John Jones, gotcha. 10 miles down right. the road, right. and he was a Right. I'm a listener. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So now, yep. am, I, am I getting it to you? Abolitionist. Yeah. So then, you, this man would feed him, mm -hmm. 
and, and give them some clothes, because the only song Lee didn't have on nothing, no more than a shirt. Right. Give them some clothes, give them a feed, and give them a bag, and tell them when night comes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. two, three o'clock in the morning, you go down this highway, uh -huh. not a highway, this pathway, uh -huh. and over there, and you knock on the door, and they had a cold. Uh -huh. You knock on the door, uh -huh. and they will let you in. Uh -huh. They will take you in, take that slave in, feed him, and give him the chance to rest up, uh -huh. and then the next day, he would send him on his way. And that's how they got to the north. Then when you get in the north, under that's what you're talking about. Yep, that was it. That was Harriet Tutman. Bing, bing, yeah. and the yeah. is for if you had <laughs> some of the French up in Canada, in mm -hmm. that French made oh, yeah. in Canada. Okay. Most yeah. of them yeah. But some yeah. Indians was up there, too. Uh -huh. So now you still ain't told us how the niggas got the word in Texas. I'm going to okay. tell you. The white man took all these slaves to the south. Yeah. The ones that were close to the Mason Dixon Line. And you set up farms and plantations down. down there. Now, Texas. You got so many white people down into Texas. Texas formed their own country. Uh -huh. Did you yeah. realize that Texas yeah. once yeah. upon a time yeah. was Texas? Yeah, it was on the Republican of Republic Texas. Texas. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, the sub but then who was their first president? Okay. Uh, what is his name? I'm trying to think of his name. <laughs> I'm not calling his back name. See what happened was uh the uh but the Texas white people was afraid that the, the French were gonna uh, would go overrun and take Texas. And, but then most of the people that were running the farms down there came from the United States. So they're the ones that was, was, was trying to, uh, to, instead of having a state down there and living in fear, they said we should join the United States. And the, and the, the, the federal government, the, the Congress, was admitted territory. So they declared Texas a territory and brought them into the Union, Union as okay. a state. Okay. okay. Under Austin. Yeah. That's Sam Houston. Sam, Sam Houston was there on that too. No, Sam Houston was, the Sam Houston was the, actually the general, and he was the actual one that, 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 that uh, ran the, the, the Alamo, the, yeah. the yeah. army and stuff. Now, he let me tell you, make now, I'm giving the June Gina to the president. Okay. 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 became the president. Okay. That year, Austin became the president. He was the president of, of Texas. Right. Of the Austin. Okay. Of Texas. Yeah. Of Texas. Austin was the president. Right. That's why you got Austin, Texas, where Marley and them live right now. Right. He okay. became the president. Yes. Okay. They now, wanted Sam Houston, but Sam Houston wasn't in the politics. No, Sam Houston was dealing with the Indians. No, he was a fighter. He wanted money and he yeah. wanted land. Sam Houston had huh? the biggest. People don't know. Did you know Sam Houston had the biggest land? Sam Houston in Texas. It's like bigger than some states. Yeah. Why did they name that black college after? Who? This is Sam Houston. Yeah, okay, because he fought at the Alamo. He fought at the Alamo. Him and what he put his name in his name. Once upon a time, Sam Houston had a big state. Really? Yeah. You know, there's a... Had all kinds of black cowboys. They came out of Tennessee. And all of the crackers love to talk about it. Half slave, got kids by him, right? He's very famous. He died at the Alamo. He fought, fought in the Alamo? Who? In the Battle of the Alamo. Who was that? Oh, what was the name of this guy? They made a movie about him. Davy Crockett died. Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. Daniel Boone died at the Alamo. Travis. You can Travis. When you guys go down to the Alamo, your face will drop. I know. That, I, the Alamo they is tell me the so river, clearly it's the river the side is of there. from the garage. Right. So <laughs> clearly <laughs> that's front. That's no, <laughs> you guys, I went to see the Alamo and walked in and I was like, are you kidding me? That's what's so, Grandma, you got to finish the story. Okay, let me finish the story. Let me finish the story. Now, when as states, see, uh, as the Civil War, uh, Lincoln was trying to bring the Union together. Uh, and, and not to have too much animosity. He wanted the country to, to be together. Mm -hmm. So he was catering to the feelings of the chief politicians in the southern states. Okay, okay now Virginia was so close to uh, 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 okay. Washington, and well, it wasn't Washington at that Yeah, it was Washington. Just had was building Washington at that building. Uh, that, uh, 
uh, they were more sympathetic, and they were English too. Uh -huh. They always got to keep this English in there. Right, right. Because English was, was the key of civilization on the Eastern Coast. Right. In education. Mm -hmm. okay. Amongst the white universities. Okay. They were all English. Okay. They were one that set up Hampton Institute and all over. Okay. And okay. And there was never, for a long time, there was never a black president of a university. A mm -hmm. black university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Booker T was no president. He, he was a student there. Okay. But he wasn't okay. president. Okay. He, he was writes about that in his book, about his interview. He yeah. cleaned yeah. that, um, he cleaned the, uh, he, yeah. he had to clean it. He stayed over, he stayed overnight. No, 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 no. No, Booker no, T no. Was kinda, Booker T was kind of, Booker T was kind of sussy. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah. Booker T wasn't no Frederick <laughs> Douglass. Booker no. T was kind of like, like, Adam Clayton Powell or somebody. He was kind of like that. If you want to do it, 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 you know if Booker T was living there, you know what you fellas would call him? What? Yeah. No, you would call him Uncle Tom. He'd be a Tom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he was a Tom. He was a Tom. He was a Tom. You got to read his book. No. Yes, he did. He was a bunch of people. You got to read his book. Booker T was. Right. Booker T. Right. He, he, wanted, us to, he wanted us to just do trade. Right. right. No. Oh, no. no. He, yes, he, he did. did. Yeah, he wanted yes, us to stay straight. He, the straight, he the wanted straight. us to just do trade. He, he, he did got, not he, he believe black people completed. to go to college. Yeah, now, you went to Hampton Institute. Huh? Booker T. Right, but it was a trade school. Yeah. Right. And then when you graduate, that they give you a certificate. Right. They didn't give no certificate. He didn't think we But more so than that, that he got. He was like the you say to Uncle Tom Daddy because that was so many people so many people listened to him and he prayed black people always to be more thankful. He limited us. Yeah, he was limiting. He was using not even that part of it. He was using confidence. He could go to college and 